Nicole, I'm from the Correspondence School in Christchurch. I am recycle at home, so it'll be great to see what happens after it leaves my house. New Zealanders consume a massive amount of the world's precious resources, and it's the job of resource recovery specialists to ensure these assets don't end up in landfills. Nicole will be shown how to turn trash into treasure by Wastebusters school educator Sharon Breakwell. Hi Nicole, how are you doing? Good, thanks. I'm Sharon and welcome to Ashbrook and Wastebusters. Oh, nice to meet you. The purpose of resource recovery is our journey towards zero waste. This is one way we can achieve it. OK, Nicole, what we're going to do is we're going to take some stuff off, we're going to look at if it can go into the shop and be sold. Sometimes it doesn't feel like a job. You actually get up in the morning and you feel really good about coming to work. You meet people, you meet lots of different people, not just people from our own community, but we meet lots of people who travel from other countries and come here specifically just to have a look at what we're doing, which is great. The phrase, one person's trash is another person's treasure, is never truer for Wastebusters at their reuse store. But some trash has a longer journey to become useful again. Glass, cans, plastic and paper can all be recycled, oh, but first they have to be sorted. OK, Nicole, what they're doing here is this is where all the plastics get sorted. So it comes in and through with the forklift, they put it into the hopper, goes along the conveyor belt, and that from there is all sorted. Each plastic, the reason they have a number on it is because of the different chemicals that go into the plastic. So if we mixed a number one with a number seven plastic and then it went through the process of being recycled <laughs> through the factories, yep. it could cause an explosion. So that's why it's really important that we separate properly here and that it's done properly. Once the recyclable items are sorted, they are compacted into a baler ready to be shipped to recycling factories where the material is made into new products. Give me a hand. But there are more items in the back of Sharon's car that need to be dealt with, including pruning offcuts and garden waste. To tip, green waste creates what we call leachate in the landfills and it's a poison liquid and it can also release methane from our landfills as well. So the more we keep out, the more we get back, we can make compost and everybody's a win-win. The green waste is mulched into a pulp and it's Nicole's job to spread a liquid solution of beneficial microorganisms that help composting and reduce bad smells. <laughs> oh. In a couple of months, Nicole. this green waste will become compost ready to spread on the garden. But not everything is recyclable. Products that mix materials like plastic, cardboard and metals together have to go in the landfill. Maybe the way to actually stop this would be if they thought about packaging at the beginning. Put it into something that's recyclable. Yeah, decided not to mix the materials. Exactly. So it would work. So this is where these are going to go. Wastebusters workers are also responsible for educating the public, showing them the ways in which rubbish can be turned into valuable products. This is just a plain normal shoe, and from here what we've done is we've put a little bit of plaster inside, plaster Paris, and then mosaic it. We get to use our imaginations, we get to create things, not just do the recycling. Reusing it is a big part of the recycling. Like and Sharon one. shows Nicole one of the results of recycling, a shirt made from recycled plastic. It is. It's made out of your number one drink bottles. That's awesome. Yeah. Nicole's work in resource recovery isn't over yet, however, as she's off to Metal Corp, where operations manager Gary McCaw will show her how scrap metal is processed. Right, Nicole, this is a product that we get in from our customers. Uh, it comes in in this sort of form here. What we have to do is we have to clean it all up. So we'll take this bit of copper and we'll take the brass nut of it by cutting it out in a cleaning shear. Metal Corp buys metal off the public and then reprocesses it. The metal can only be melted down later by the foundries for reuse if it is separated out. So this process makes for effective recycling. The reason we take the uh, joints out of the copper is to upgrade it. The, the baler creates 15 kilogram blocks that are easy to transport. The best result for me is knowing that uh, from years ago people used to dig holes and they'd push it in there or farmers would dig a hole on the property and push it in and it would go to landfill. Now all that stuff is being recycled. So we're doing our bit for the environment which is great, you know. We are meant to be a New Zealand free and green country and this is our little part to the equation. Would you like to feel the weight? <laughs> They're quite heavy, aren't they? Yeah. All right? Yeah. 
We'll get one of the other boys to clean it up. <laughs> the next job is to get this car ready to be crushed. But first they have to make it safe, which involves removing all of the leftover petrol. So what we're going to do, Nicole, is we're going to drill a hole in the tank and take the fuel out of it. So we use this pneumatic drill to do it. What we need to do is you're going to need to stand on the machine with your right leg, hold it with both hands, put your right hand on the trick, and then you're going to push down with your right leg and push the weight up until it drills until I tell you to stop. Ease it off and just close. Is that the fuel? It's pink. Petrol is pink. Oh, it comes in various colours. We're now going to be getting you into a green machine very shortly, but first of all, we have to give you a bit of training on one of the smaller machines. So we're going to put you in this one here first. So let's go. There's a lot of intense training that goes into our operators. They need to have an awareness of people around them. Also, they also need to have an awareness for themselves because a bad operator could do a lot of damage to himself with a 40 metre pipe in his grapple. You know, you put it through a cab window or something. So. There's a sense of uh, safety that people have to know. The green machine is a 184 horsepower crane whose magnetic grabber can reach 13 metres and its cabin raises up to get a clear view of the work that Nicole will be doing. The scrap metal is the beginning and the end of the recycling industry. I mean, for everything new that comes on the market, there's something old that falls off. And in about 20 years' time, that new thing that was made from the old one will be back to us and we'll start again. So the cycle is just a continuous circle. Sometimes it slows down, sometimes it speeds up, but it's still there and it's constantly revolving. It's like a um, changing map, basically, and we're in the middle of it. The car weighs one and a half tonnes, but Nicole is able to move it around like a toy. And now it's time to crush it. Nicole has worked in both commercial and community resource recovery operations, so did she make the grade? Nicole did brilliantly. She was a pleasure to show around. She asked interesting questions. She was excellent. She um, handled everything well. She got into the tasks that we asked her to try. And, uh, yeah, definitely wouldn't hesitate in uh, looking at offering her a job. What I enjoyed best was getting to crush a car, operating heavy machinery, I'm just generally saying everything. Resource recovery is a vibrant and diverse industry focusing on the three R's. Reduce, reuse and recycle to manage New Zealand's resources more efficiently and reduce the amount of wastes going to landfill. Materials can be recovered, reused and recycled from many areas such as household and commercial, scrap metal, construction and demolition and composting. Resource recovery is a high growth industry with lots of opportunities for multi-skilled jobs in the green collar workforce. People working in the industry should be interested in the environment and have a practical outlook with a liking for working outdoors. There are no specific entry requirements for the industry and skills and national qualifications can be achieved through on-the-job training with the Extractive Industries Training Organisation. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.